Hello, and welcome to another Science Man digital lesson. Today, we're going to talk about dangerous radiation. People are often confused about what is radiation or radioactivity, and as a result, there's a lot of misinformation out there about what is dangerous and what is not. So let's try and address that. You may have seen this symbol before. This is the International Standards Organization danger symbol for dangerous radiation or specifically ionizing radiation. The ISO is actually considering a new, more graphic symbol. Just to make it perfectly clear, you should stay away from ionizing radiation. So what exactly is ionizing radiation? Well, the first thing we need to know is that it comes in two forms, particles and waves. The particles are alpha particles, beta particles, and cosmic particles and the waves are ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays. What does this ionizing radiation come from? Well, that's probably a lesson in itself, but in short, cosmic particles are energetic subatomic particles that originate from many stellar phenomena in outer space. Most of them are simply fast-moving hydrogen nuclei, and the ones that make it through our atmosphere constitute natural background radiation. X-rays can originate from outer space too, but they can also be man-made, mostly for medical imaging. Ultraviolet radiation can be created as well, but most of our exposure comes from the sun. We all know we need to limit our exposure to the sun and avoid too much tanning and sunburns. Alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays can all result from radioactive decay. Without going into too much detail, radioactive decay occurs in unstable isotopes. In an effort to become more stable, the unstable nucleus of an isotope may emit particles or emit energy in the form of gamma rays. So, for example, here we have the nucleus of an unstable isotope and it just happens to emit ionizing radi radiation in the form of an alpha particle. So just how dangerous is this alpha particle? Well, that depends. Alpha particles are pretty wimpy. They can't even penetrate paper or skin. In fact, alpha particles uh, radiation can be useful. Uh, americium is a radioactive isotope that is used in smoke detectors. It ionizes air in an ionization chamber, which allows current to flow in the gap between two metal plates. Uh, but once smoke uh, floats up and interrupts that current, the alarm goes off. So that's good, uh, but what you wouldn't want to do is smash a piece of americium from a smoke detector and then inhale the dust. This would expose your delicate internal tissues to alpha particle ionizing radiation. And that's the last thing we want. For the molecules in our cells, such as DNA, can be damaged by ionizing radiation. Now that can lead to cellular death or even diseases such as cancer. And that's why you shouldn't smoke. Tobacco contains radioactive isotopes of lead and polonium and can reach high concentrations in smokers' lungs. It's suspected that 90% of lung cancers are caused by the radiation emitted by inhaled lead and polonium. Uh, concentrating natural occurring radioactive isotopes can yield intense ionize, ionizing radiation emitters. For example, this is a disk of highly purified and enriched uranium-235. The 235 means that the isotope has an atomic mass of 235. This enriched uranium gives off so much radiation that it's, a, it's an excellent fuel for nuclear power plants. Um, nuclear power plants hold the uranium nuclear fuel in reactor vessels that have very thick metal and cement walls which prevent the escape of any ionizing radiation. They also have complex cooling systems. The whole point of a uh, nuclear reactor is to produce heat that can drive electricity generating turbines, but they can't be allowed to run out of control. Uh, the decay of uranium in a nuclear reactor occurs in a nuclear chain reaction, 
If that reaction gets out of control, so much heat can be generated that the fuel and containment facility can melt. And this would be a very bad thing, as nuclear uh, radioactive fuel would be exposed to the environment and, and that would put humans at risk. To understand that risk, one must understand how uh, that radiation can spread. Remember that gamma rays are not particles, they're waves, and travel like any other electromagnetic waves, such as non-ionizing forms of radiation like visible light, microwaves, or radio waves. And although gamma rays are the most dangerous of waves, all you need to do is be far enough away from them in order to avoid the danger. It's a lot like visible light. The further you get away from it, the less intense it is. Um, much like observing a lamp, the further you get away from the lamp, the harder it is to see until you reach a point where you can't see it at all. In terms of a danger from nuclear meltdown, though, even if the core were exposed, if you were far enough away, the gamma, ra gamma radiation from the core wouldn't reach you. However, nuclear accidents are rarely that simple. If the nuclear facility were to catch fire or explode, that would create a very unfortunate situation where radioactive particles could be carried by dust, smoke, water vapor, or any other particles in the air. That would be like actual pieces of the nuclear core floating into the atmosphere. If these radioactive particles land on your skin, uh, if you ingest them or they are inhaled, you would have an intense source of ionizing radiation on and in your body. Uh, in this way, a large nuclear accident can result in dangerous clouds of radioactive particles, uh, depending on atmospheric conditions, being carried all over the globe. So, hopefully you have a better idea of the dangers of ionizing radiation. Now, part of this digital lesson was used, was made with the use of uh, Yenka. If you want to check out more on Yenka, just go to yenka.com. Thanks very much for watching this digital lesson and take care.